The James Webb Telescope is by far one of NASA's biggest and most important achievements in space technology. It's the first telescope that released the very first set of pictures showing Stevens Quintet, the Carina Nebula, the Southern Ring Nebula, and readings about the atmosphere of WASP-69b. However, when it comes to space science, it's not all fun and games, because today, we will be talking about the horrific discoveries made by the James Webb Space Telescope. Jane Rigby is an astrophysicist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. She works in the Observational Cosmology Lab and is the Operational Project Scientist for the $10 billion Webb Telescope. Jane and her co-workers work to get the observatory ready for the first galaxies, exoplanets, etc. that Webb would find when it took off on Christmas Day 2021. Jane is most interested in how galaxies form and how black holes grow in the middle of galaxies. Her job is to figure out how scientists and engineers around the world can use the telescope. This includes choosing proposed observations, making observational schedules, operating the telescope, getting the data, and removing the instrument signatures. Most of the time, Webb's time is reserved through a very competitive peer review process. They found 200 experts to look over and rank more than a thousand proposals from all over the world for the Cycle 1 General Observer programs. All decisions are made without anyone's name or location being known. This means that neither the reviewers nor the proposals know who the other one is or where they are. In the first picture, called the Stephen Quintet, two of the five galaxies are coming together. Between these galaxies, gas and dust are heating up, which is making stars. Keeping an eye on these types of galaxy groups could help us learn more about how gravity works on a larger scale, which could help us figure out what dark matter is. The Carina Nebula picture is one of the most impressive and detailed ones. A place where stars are being made is about 7,600 light years from Earth. The picture shows the cosmic cliffs of Carina, which are lit up by hundreds of new stars shining through the nebula. Scientists could learn more about how stars and our solar system were made if they study this area. But this whole mess is caused by something more complicated. A spectrometer found that all of the stars have become very cold. Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and magnesium were all there, and the filaments connected one star to the next, making a web-like structure that stretched across light years. It was almost like it was spreading out. Theories in the story, on the other hand, suggested that aliens were building Dyson spheres, which are very advanced structures that trap the energy of a star inside them. At this point, it looked like they might have found aliens, as they had first thought. But they quickly saw that their idea was very, very wrong. Webb can point the telescope in any direction within a third of the sky at any time to make sure that the sun shield blocks the light from the Earth, sun, and moon. This observation field is what tells the web in the sky what it can see all year. For instance, the team figures out how many days web can see and which fixed point it can see. About 60 days a year, you can shoot at targets in the plane of the solar system. On the other hand, you can shoot at targets outside the plane all year long. The team also wants Webb to always be doing something. During scientific work, the telescope sends data back to Earth at a rate of 30 megabytes per second, which is slower than a cable modem. But the instruments only have 57 megapixels of memory. This is taken care of by compressing the data and asking users not to use too much of it. The users also have a month to make their observations. Hubble and Webb are not the same in a few ways. For instance, the Earth gets in the way of the Hubble half the time, so it moves to the next target during that time. Webb, on the other hand, moves slower than a clock's minute hand and doesn't hide behind the Earth. 
It takes almost an hour to turn the James Webb Space Telescope 180 degrees. To make a route with Webb, the team has to link visits that are close to each other in the sky. This keeps the spacecraft from having to make big, time-consuming slews. Webb also has momentum buildup, which means that the lifetime of the telescope is limited by the photons that carry that momentum. This is because propellant is a big part of how long Webb will last, and propellant is used to control momentum. When photons hit the sun shield, they cause torque, which makes Webb's reaction wheels spin. This cancels out the effect. Even so, the reaction wheels would sometimes need to get rid of their angular momentum by spinning, which doesn't take too much fuel. All of this started in 1993, when Hubble saw a star disappear in a way that puzzled astronomers. It didn't go supernova or die naturally, it simply went dark over a few minutes, the story goes. This star was already too faint to see with the naked eye, and ground-based telescopes had trouble picking it out from the surrounding stars, so the event wasn't widely known to the public. Even scarier, Hubble also caught the disappearance of a binary star system in 2007. Astronomers at NASA were, of course, scared and confused by this event, so they took matters into their own hands and started looking for strange things. They found two stars that had disappeared in the same area in 1995 and in 2002. We all know that stars die when their nuclear fuel runs out. What happens to a star at the end of its life depends on how big it is. The hydrogen fuel in really big stars runs out quickly, but they are hot enough to fuse heavier elements like helium and carbon. When the star runs out of fuel, it falls apart and the outer layers explode in a supernova. After a supernova, what is left is a neutron star, which is the collapsed core of the star, or a black hole if there is enough mass. Less dramatic deaths will happen to stars with masses up to about 1.4 times that of our sun. As their hydrogen runs out, they get bigger and become red giants, which fuse helium in their cores. Then, as they lose their outer layers, they often form a planetary nebula. The core of the star stays as a white dwarf star, which cools down over billions and billions of years. Red dwarfs, which are the smallest stars, burn their nuclear fuel so slowly that they could live to be a hundred billion years old, which is much older than the age of the universe right now. This time though, it was strange. The star didn't seem to dim and blow up slowly, it just stopped shining, as if it had never been there. No one had ever seen one of these big red stars just disappear so quietly before. It showed that the lives and deaths of stars are more complicated than our simple theories had said. Stan Woosley at the University of California Santa Cruz says, An amazing, important, fun, and exciting as this is, it's not a surprise. The discovery may help explain why computer models of big stars don't always show them blowing up. So what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel.